All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday night. Earthmaster here, about 7.57 p.m. That's California time, April 10th, 2025. Uh, got some activity coming into Southern California right now. Make sure you got all the bells off, which I do. A uh, three-pointer. Looks like a 3.1 earthquake here across the area of uh, the Brawley Seismic Zone. We've been watching a pretty good earthquake swarm down here uh, throughout the last 24 hours. Uh, and it looks like the magnitudes here are starting to increase. It's very worrisome here because it is really close here to the San Andreas Fault. Now, if it was just the southern end here of the Brawley Seismic Zone, the, well, that may be one thing. But earlier this morning, when this sequence of events kicked up, we noticed areas upstream here just off the San Andreas Fault experience its own earthquake swarm with uh, about 12 earthquakes or so. Uh, in the area just off the San Andreas Fault, the southern segment, where we expect the strain to transfer off of. So this is uh, definitely some developing information out here. And as always, you know, I, I always consider the likelihood of seeing a larger earthquake uh, increase following any type of movement like we're seeing right now. So we got to be on guard. Uh, looks like there was a 3.1 3 and about a minute later a 2.8. So things are quite compacted down here. They're about as compact as you can as you can imagine, right? Pretty much in your head, imagine a spring wound up as tight as it can be. That's where we're at right now in the San Andreas Fault here. This southern segment has not had a full rupture here in over 300 years. Now the San Andreas Fault itself, uh, the southern segment here where we're experiencing the earthquake swarm is capable of an 8.1 magnitude earthquake. Now, the regular intervals here looks like around 140 to 160 years. And here we are at about 300 years. So, you know, one would obviously say that we're well overdue for an earthquake here in Southern California. I've been hearing about this since I was a kid. Not going to give away my age. But, uh, yeah, my parents always used to say, yeah, Southern California, they're overdue for the big one. And it's going to slide off into the ocean. Well, geologically speaking, it cannot slide off into the ocean here. This is not a subduction zone. It is a transform boundary here, strike slip boundary. Uh, but we can get some, uh, you know, interesting damage here from an 8.1 out there. Not going to slide off into the ocean, though. Liquefaction comes to mind, though, when it comes to that large of an earthquake there across the Los Angeles Basin area. So uh, 3.1, 2.5. Uh, 2.0, getting a sequence of earthquakes there happening rapid uh, within a short amount of time period there. Now, looking at the seismograph stations here, I don't have anything specifically located there around the uh, Brawley Seismic Zone where the swarm is occurring, but it did pick it up there, the three-pointer, on the, um, the Barrett Station, which sits right over here. Now, hard to say if we got, uh, if, if all these magnitudes here are, I'm assuming they're individual quakes here. Let's take a look. The 3.1 underneath automatic status review. Uh, 2.5 underneath automatic status review. 2.0 a couple minutes later uh, underneath automatic status review. So this will get revised accordingly once a seismologist looks and you know looks at the data that's coming in um, now these are not big earthquakes obviously they're probably not being felt by anyone outside the region here maybe if you're at the bottom of the Salton Sea but man after going down there a couple years ago I don't understand why you would want to be down there it's horrible um, goodness I, I will probably never venture back down that way but hey yellow right you only live once got to experience everything at least once there so uh, I did I did my time down there for a day. I was actually down here investigating a similar swarm a few years back. I wanted to see what was going on with their, uh, with the earthquake swarming going on. So this is uh, about 30 earthquakes or so off the Brawley Seismic Zone, just south here of the San Andreas Fault, roughly about seven miles or so. Now, as I've said before, this is, you know, it's common. We do see earthquake swarms down here on occasion but what's not common is the sequence of events that transpired this morning with the earthquake activity here and then a short time later upstream here uh, just off the southern branch of the san andreas fault so you know this segment right here the southern end here is 
experiencing a strain like no other time in history. Well, maybe at least in recent history here. Uh, been over 300 years since the southern branch experienced a full rupture here. And it's got to. It's got to be under so much strain right now. If we look at the last seven days, um, not, a whole lot of, not a whole lot of activity specifically on the San Andreas Fault, but it's off of the San Andreas where we expect the strain uh, to show these little signs here of, of, you know, really getting compacted here in terms of that plate boundary. Over the last 30 days, not a whole lot on it. But when it goes, folks, it's going to be a big one. Um, it's there. The, uh, the pressure is built up quite nicely in that area. Uh, so it looks like they downgraded this most recent earthquake um, from a two-pointer to a 1.9. I do want to double check this 3.1 in terms of the magnitude levels out here. They're uh, going with a 3.1 with an error rate of 0.3, which is quite high. Not for sure why they didn't go with this one, which is a 0.26, which is lower, but the magnitudes are higher here. So this is all automatic data coming in from many, many, many different seismograph stations around the area locally and also at a distance that uh, inputs the data received from the seismic wave and then it outputs a magnitude. Some of these magnitudes up there in the upper three range, but regardless, it's the multitude of quakes that are happening out here right now across the southern end of the San Andreas Fault that has me a little concerned. And it's overall a, uh, a picture out here, painting a picture of some movement going on around the North American and the Pacific Plate Boundary. That's the San Andreas Fault. It's all over Southern California right now. Uh, the Garlock Fault Zone is experiencing its own earthquake swarm up here. Uh, Ten earthquakes of various magnitudes, including a couple there, or at least one in the last hour. Uh, some movement up along the creeping segment. But right now, the main focus is down here across Southern California where all the activity is starting to show signs here of uh, some potential impending movement. So be on guard. Um, you know, I, I don't know what else to say aside from things can happen uh, real quick out here. And I believe they're going to happen when we're experiencing uh, earthquake activity such as this. Elevated swarms across various areas that could trigger the San Andreas Fault. You don't want to be dancing uh, around uh, a bridge that's just about ready to fall, right? If you really think about it, it's very brittle. Any type of movement or pressure around that uh, weak bridge could trigger a collapse. Uh, and this is what I see out here. It's various swarms around the region of the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault that has me concerned right now. Um, so we'll continue to watch that, folks. Make sure you have a, a earthquake plan, obviously. Uh, with uh, the ongoing activity. Some movement way up north around San Francisco, a little 1.1. Uh, Northern California here, a couple smaller earthquakes around the southern end of the San Andreas Fault. Nothing spectacular going on there for now. Uh, some sporadic activity. My birds, even though I have the lights out there where they're at, uh, my parakeets are still going crazy. I don't know why, but they are. I'm sure you can maybe hear them in the background, but I'm using a... a uh, uh, a microphone that's designed for just close range voice so it's probably not picking them up um, the rest of the globe here let's see what we got here for the largest activity 5.5 in Indonesia so things are somewhat quiet right now in terms of larger scale movement across the globe right on average we're easily uh, seeing some five pointers each day uh, but what's not normal is the activity stirring up out here across Southern California right now. It's all, it's all got a little pattern going on here, and uh, it's lighting up. Southern California is lighting up like a Christmas tree, and that's not what you want here. Around a major plate boundary that has not had any full rupture and a reoccurrence interval of 140, 160 years, no activity in 300 years. Go, you know, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me that I'm wrong because I'm not. Um, I'll continue to watch this, folks. I think everyone else should as well. Just be on guard, and we will uh, catch you guys back out here a little bit later. Um, unless something major happens out here. Let me see, make sure everything's lined up. Um, I'm just going to be watching this off and on here through the evening, and I'll report back on anything that changes out here. But make sure you guys subscribe. Download the MyShake early alert system there. And, um, yeah, look at the slip rate intervals out here. The average slip rate across the San Andreas Fault is 1.3 to 1.5. So if you were to take 1.3 inches there, the lowest, 
and um, you know multiply that times I can do that real quick 1.3 inches times 300 we're gonna go 300 years Wow that's 390 uh, inches um, and divide that by 12 that's 32 feet of potential offset of uh, rupture potential that we could see along the San Andreas fault here that 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 would obviously equal uh, in 8.1 so that's a lot of built-up strain that's out here in Southern California right now we've got to watch these swarms around it to not watch them and just be complacent saying oh they happen all the time nothing's gonna happen <laughs> it's crazy I read all the comments out there and I see people saying that here on my channel nothing's gonna happen you know why you may be right but one of these times here you know, being complacent like that is it's just not good. And this is just not one area seeing this re this uh, uptick. It's just off the San Andreas Fault to the north. Garlock Fault shear zone showing some strain as we expect. The plate boundary here, right? The Pacific plate is brushing up against the North American plate here. Uh, moving off to the north northwest. The uh, North American plate here moving off to the south southwest in the way so as you get that strain building up here in the spring zone right where everything's loading up for a big earthquake you would expect some strain to show up here across that shear zone and that is exactly what's showing here and it's just to, it's not just today it's been showing up here in the last couple weeks here a couple earthquakes out there last 30 days um, some activity but man today you know, it, it tops the chart here. This has been actually an ongoing earthquake swarm here in the last 30 days uh, across this area of the Garlock Fault Shear Zone. 72 earthquakes today lighten up along with other areas of Southern California. So be on guard, folks. Uh, we'll continue to monitor and report back on anything that changes out here. So in the meantime, stay safe. We'll see you guys soon.